Welcome into the Commander's Report live show. I am your host, Jack Sperry, and over the next hour or so, we're going to be breaking down the latest when it comes to the Washington Commanders as we get closer and closer to the start of the 2024 NFL Draft. Coming up here in just a little bit, I'm going to be going over the latest news and rumors surrounding the Washington Commanders. Adam Schefter came out with a report today saying that he believes that Jaden Daniels, last year's Heisman Trophy winner and LSU quarterback, will be the selection for your Washington Commanders at number two overall. I'll share my reaction to that on today's program. Then we'll get into the Commander Support live Q&A where you guys have an opportunity to get your questions on the show. If you have a mock draft you want to share, if you have an idea, if you got a question you want to run by me, make sure you guys use hashtag commanders or super chat down there in the comments section here uh, to get your question on today's Q&A. But I will say the only way you can get your question guaranteed on the mailbag today is if you super chat. And then to finish off today's show, I'm going to be going over my list of day two draft targets. Right now, the Washington Commanders have a whopping five picks in day two. So rounds two and three, I'm going to be breaking down the guys that I think the commanders should be targeting at all of their positions of need heading into day two. All right, so we're going to be getting into this here in just a second. But before we get into all of the great Washington Commanders content on today's program, I want to shout out today's sponsor at Game Time, which is the fastest and easiest way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater in your area. Guys, I'm somebody that loves to get tickets last minute to an event. I'm not somebody that likes to get tickets far in advance. I'm just, I'll just be sitting here at my office here uh, at Chat Sports, and I'll be like, you know what? I want to go to an NBA basketball game today, or I want to go to an MLB baseball game, or I want to go see a concert with my girlfriend, Cassie. So all that I need to do is bring up my phone, put up my game time app, and they've got the lowest price guarantee on all tickets to every single event. And then also you get flash deals right before game time, so you also get even lower prices right before the event starts. It's absolutely fantastic, and game time is the only ticketing app on the market that gives you complete peace of mind with your purchase. See the personal view from your seat before you buy the ticket so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive at the arena. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time today. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code CHATSPORTS. It's one word, all caps. It's right down there on the bottom of your screen for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code CHATSPORTS. It's one word, all caps, for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed. So get us started here on the Commander's Report live show by telling me where you are watching the show uh, from for a shout-out. So I'll give some shout-outs here. I see Eugene is in the chat right now. We've got Timmy Jones. we got Jonathan Taylor, my guy. He said uh, Craigster is here. Uptown Dre is here. Omar's Burner, what's up, my friend? Uh, we got Sean Bachman, or I hope I'm saying that, Bauman. I hope I'm saying that right, my friend. Uh, we got Nicole Williams down there. Who else we got here? We got Cassie Voth, my girlfriend's in the chat, ladies and gentlemen. She is here. Hope she's having a great day. Uh, we got Uptown Dre. We've got David Dickinson. We've got Walt Walter Ellis. Uh, we've got Bowers from Richmond. Walter is from Seattle. Cassie's from Dallas, Texas. Eugene from Richmond. Uptown Dre is from D.C. Uh, we got Tyrone Payne in here. We got Sean. We've got Nicole from Virginia. Sean is from Indiana. Uh, Uptown Dre is saying uh, salute, Cassie. Uh, we got Tyrone in here. We got Gotti from Connecticut. We got Timmy Jones from Rural Retreat, Virginia. Got to love that, Mr. Smitty. And by the way, we got a brand new producer here on the Commander Support this week. It is my friend, Mr. Tyler Smith, but you can call him Smitty. Say what's up, Smitty. How are we doing, Commies fans? How's everybody doing on this fine Thursday afternoon? Evening, I guess you could say. Um, happy to be here. Happy to be a member of this uh, Commander's community for the time being. I myself am a Seattle Seahawks fan, so shout out my guy uh, Walters in, uh, up there in the Pacific Northwest. So, Smitty, it's a little bit of a, of a change of pace here because we're used to having Cowboys fans in mm. here with Coop and Tex, <laughs> but now you're coming in here as a Seattle Seahawks fan. So I got to ask you, what did you think of the Sam Howell trade 
uh, that w- went down just a couple of weeks ago. Are you a fan of Sam Howell? Do you think that he might be the future of that franchise? And then what do you think of the compensation that you guys ended up getting uh, for, or that you gave us in exchange for Sam Howell? It's very interesting because I didn't love the compensation originally uh, that we gave up. I thought moving down 24 picks, obviously from round three into round four, and then obviously moving down 27 picks from five to six, um, and then only getting Sam Howell back in return just didn't seem like a, a kind of an even investment for Seattle to make. And do I think that, that he's going to be the future of this franchise? No. But I do think there's an an opportunity for him this season to potentially spot start for Geno Smith, whether he gets injured or whether he's not performing to a level that new head coach Mike McDonald is looking for. So uh, you know, Jax, uh, that Sam Howell flashed some some great plays in Washington. Uh, Was he ever going to be the long-term starter there? Probably not, but he got you some wins, and he showed off a little bit of arm talent. You want to guess, out of all the quarterbacks in the National Football League last year, who had the most uh, points above replacement in terms of rushing the football at the quarterback position? (laughs) Was it Sam Howell? It was Mr. Sam Howell. He was the most valuable rushing quarterback in football last (laughs) year, and that's something not a lot of people know uh, because I feel like I when, when people think Sam Howell, they don't think rushing quarterback. But the guy has some wheels. He can actually move a little bit. So that's something that he's going to bring to Ryan Grubb's offense there in Seattle. And another thing that I think you're going to enjoy with him, Smitty, is that he does throw the ball down the field. He's not afraid to take those shots down the field. And we know that Grubb likes to spread things out and he likes to target down the field. As, as, of course, we saw that with Michael Penix Jr., and his offense there in Washington last year. Yeah, judging by the amount of interceptions that he threw last year, I'm sure he has no problem <laughs> taking some chances down the football. Uh, hopefully he, he minimizes those mistakes in Seattle if he has the opportunity to start. But I'm excited. I think there will be a little bit of a QB competition, maybe not uh, one that favors Sam Howell to start. But if he can show himself uh, off in training camp and in practice, I think there's an opportunity for him to become the Seahawks starter at some point next season. Absolutely, man. So let's talk about the super chat menu today, all right? Because Smitty's on here. He's his first time on the Commander's Report, so he needs to get his first slap of his <laughs> Commander's Report career, all right? $20 super chats, and we'll slap the Smitty. It's Slap Smitty Day here on chats, or here, uh, here at the Commander's Report. So if you send in a $20 super chat, I got the tortillas right here. You guys love it when we slap Tex and Coop in the face with these tortillas. Smitty, man, I'm sorry, dude. You just got to get one. You just got to take one for the team today. So uh, somebody's going to send it. Somebody's going to send in that $20 super chat, and it's going to hurt. But you know what? It's going to be worth it. And then it's also, for the greater good. That's for the greater good. That's right. Any super chat, you're going to get a shout out. If you got a question, you want to make sure you get on the mailbag today. Make sure you send in a super chat today to make sure that question gets on there. And then for every ten dollars super chat today, we're going to be taking shots. Uh, we got Patron in here, uh, going to be ready to get that going here today. So ten dollars, uh, we'll take some shots for you guys. Going to the Patron zone. Going to the Patron zone for every ten dollars super chat today. All right. So now. Coming up on the show, we got the latest news and rumors. But before we get into that, man, before we get into this, Smitty, make sure you guys click that thumbs up icon and like today's show. We got over 100 people watching worldwide right now. Just 20 likes, though. So I want to get to just 25 likes. Can I get five more likes down there right now? And if we can get five more likes, get to 25, we'll get into our first segment today, which is the latest news and rumors surrounding the Washington Commanders. Uh, We got 108 people watching. Make sure you click that thumbs up icon right now. It's like taking your shoes off when you enter somebody's home as a guest. You come into the Commanders Report, you hit the thumbs up icon, and we can get going with our activities. Uh, Exactly, exactly. Well put, Smitty. I like that right there. All right, so we got there, baby. Let's get into this first segment coming up here in just a second. The latest news and rumors surrounding the Washington Commanders. A big-time report from Adam Schefter today says that Jaden Daniels is likely on his way to Washington. We'll be discussing that. Also, uh, some pretty interesting trade rumors surrounding uh, Terry McLaurin after the Stephon Diggs trade. We'll go over that. And then some idiot put J.J. McCarthy at number two to the Washington Commanders in their mock draft. I can't wait to rip that one to shreds here in about two minutes here and then also make sure you got you guys use hashtag commanders or super chat to get on the mailbag today and then we're going to finish off the show with day two draft targets for the washington commanders so without further ado smitty are we ready to get things going i think i think we are my friend 
All right, let's get into this first segment right now, the latest news and rumors surrounding the Washington Commanders. Today on the Commanders Report, we got a bunch of great Commanders news and rumors to cover with you guys today. First up, we're going to be talking about a new report from Adam Schefter that says that Jaden Daniels is likely going to be the pick for Washington at number two overall. Then we'll get into a mock draft where somebody has the Commanders taking J.J. McCarthy at number two overall. We'll talk about that as well. And then we'll get into an interesting trade rumor surrounding Terry McLaurin potentially being sent to the Buffalo Bills after Stefan Diggs was sent to the Houston Texans earlier this week. And before we get into today's news and rumors coverage, make sure you click that thumbs up icon so we can beat Tyler Smith's Seahawks Today crew that just had a really good day the other day here. 824 likes is pretty good there, Smitty. But you know what? This commander support crew, we know what's what. We're going to get at least 1,000 likes on today's show. Oh, I, I don't think so. I don't think this Commander's crew can get anywhere near the amount of likes that my Seahawks today crew can get. The 12s have your number. Listen, we got so We took Sam Howell from you. We're going to take the like battle from you as well. So I, I don't know. If you're up to the challenge, maybe you could give it a shot. But I, don't, I have no faith in the Washington Commander's community. As you can see, Tyler Smith likes to run his little dirty mouth right here on the Commander's Report. Shut him up right now by clicking that thumbs up icon to start off today's show. So let's get into today's top story, which is that ESPN's Adam Schefter says that LSU quarterback and last year's Heisman Trophy winner Jaden Daniels is likely going to be the pick for Adam Peters, Dan Quinn, and the Washington Commanders at number two overall in the 2024 NFL draft. This is what Schefter had to say earlier this week. I know we're not supposed to spoil picks, and we'll see how the commanders decide to move forward with the number two overall selection. I think the signs continue to point to Jaden Daniels being the second overall pick. Seems like he's popular in the scouting community. Seems like he'd bring a lot of the attributes that the commanders would like in their future franchise quarterback. And honestly, guys, I agree with Schefter. I think that the right pick here is Jaden Daniels, LSU quarterback, over a guy like Drake May, because I think that the balance when it comes to uh, the prospects here in terms of the upside versus the low side, I think Jaden Daniels brings that balance that you're looking for. And also, guys, Daniels has a top 30 visit scheduled with the Washington Commanders later this week, so we'll cover how that goes on the channel when we get more information. But when we talk about Jaden Daniels as a prospect and why I think he should be the pick for the Commanders at number two, you take a look at the balance between how high the upside is for a player versus the bust potential of a player. And I look at a guy like Drake May, who still has significant footwork issues leading to significant accuracy issues. And although those things can be fixed at the next level, and it's certainly possible that that will happen, I think Jaden Daniels brings a certain electricity, a certain ability to throw the deep ball here, and a certain amount of playmaking right away as a prospect. He still has that high-end upside that Drake May has as well. I think Jaden Daniels has the upside to be a perennial MVP candidate in this league. And listen, he's not a perfect prospect by any stretch of the imagination. I think that he takes way too many big hits. I don't think he throws over the middle of the field uh, as much as he should, but he definitely has enough there, in my opinion, to think that he can play in this league from the word go. And I think that he could be a perennial MVP candidate eventually, whereas a guy like Drake May has that high-end MVP caliber upside, but then he still has some things that he needs to work on in his first year in the National Football League, and that's not something that I'm interested uh, in playing with here, especially with Jaden Daniels still on the board. So let me know down there in the comments section, would you be happy if the Washington Commanders drafted Jaden Daniels with the number two overall pick in this year's NFL draft? Type H if you'd be happy about it, or type N if you wouldn't be. This is going to be the pinned comment on today's show, so YouTube's going to throw you an ad break here. In just a couple of seconds, when that happens, take advantage of that time by answering today's 10 question. So now we shift from Jaden Daniels and Drake May in that discussion to uh, the Washington Post, Jason LaConfora, who is one of their sports writers there at the Washington Post. And I think you can kind of see why this guy works for the Washington Post, all right? Because he has the Washington Commanders taking J.J. McCarthy out of Michigan at number two overall over both. Drake May and Jaden Daniels. This is what Jason had to say about what he's hearing about the Michigan quarterback. 
Sometimes the betting markets reveal impending reality, and I am inclined to believe there is merit to the Michigan QB's rising odds to go second overall. McCarthy being a top five pick shouldn't come as a shock if you've been reading along, even with his opportunities limited by Michigan writing its running game and his maturity, coachability, and overall quality are shining through in the staged environment of scripted uh, spring showcases. When I asked an evaluated, or evaluator for comparisons for the top four QBs, he said this about McCarthy. Looks like another Brock Purdy to me. Commander's GM uh, Adam Peters was part of the brain trust that took Purdy in San Francisco, although that was in the final round. It was actually the final pick. Some also have used Kirk Cousins, whom 49ers coach Kyle Shanahan drafted and championed in Washington as a comp. He's the kind of point guard who really fits that offense. One agent who got to know most of the leading men in this class as he recruited them, but who does not represent McCarthy, said his maturity is off the charts. Owners will fall in love with him. And this from a GM who is at Michigan's Pro Day, but does not anticipate being in position to take a quarterback this high. He kind of blew me away. I wasn't really expecting it. It was an elite, elite performance. Now, coming up here, I'm going to let you guys know whether I think there's any chance J.J. McCarthy becomes the pick and the next franchise quarterback for the Washington Commanders. But before I get into that, I want to tell you about today's sponsor at Game Time, which is the fastest and easiest way to buy tickets for the sports, music, comedy, and theater in your area. Guys, I'm somebody that likes to get tickets last minute, whether it be a concert with my girlfriend Cassie, or if I want to go to an MLB baseball game or an NBA basketball game with my boys here at Chat Sports. All I have to do is put out my Game Time app, I look through their super easy to use interface, and I have the peace of mind of knowing that you get the lowest price on any ticket to any event because Game Time has the lowest price guarantee. So you don't have to be looking at all these different ticketing apps to try to find a better price. You're going to find the best price on Game Time and it's guaranteed. Plus, if you're somebody like me that likes to get tickets last minute, then you can also benefit from their flash deals that happen right before the event starts, which drives the prices down even lower with those flash deals. So Game Time is the only ticketing app on the market today that gives you complete peace of mind with your purchase. See the view from your seat before you buy them so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive at the arena. And you can take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time today. So all you got to do is download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code CHATSPORTS, one word, all caps. You can see it right down there in the bottom of your screen for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and re redeem code CHATSPORTS. It's one word, all caps for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed. In my opinion, guys, this J.J. McCarthy nonsense is absolute madness. I would go as far to say there is no way J.J. McCarthy is the pick for the Washington Commanders over guys like Jaden Daniels and Drake May. Uh, plain and simply, guys, because I just don't see the high-end upside and all the high-caliber throws that you want to see on a, a prospect's film, on J.J. McCarthy's film. In fact, I compare his film more closer to Bo Nix and the, the kind of throws that he's making. Lots of checkdowns, lots of throw, lots of throws close to the line of scrimmage, and I'm just not sure how much that translates to the NFL game. And I really do think that the hype surrounding McCarthy is a smokescreen from teams like the Giants, from the Minnesota Vikings, from the Las Vegas Raiders and the Denver Broncos hoping that one of their opponents goes out and takes McCarthy so they can get the guy they really want when their draft selection comes up. So you take a look at my scouting report from McCarthy. And guys, I have a late round one grade on him. He could become a legitimate starter in this league. But my comp for him, and Giants fans might not like this uh, comp here, but I think he's kind of similar to Daniel Jones. He can move a little bit, but he's not an elite rusher with the football. And he has a difficult time seeing and throwing the ball down the field consistently with accuracy, all right? There's just not a whole lot of high-level NFL caliber throws on his film, and part of that is that Michigan's offense just really rode the run game and really just tried to dominate the clock, and there's just not a whole lot of volume there, but when he's throwing down the field, he's got accuracy inconsistencies, uh, and it really is all over the film there, and really his higher-level throws are when he's outside of the pocket and when he's making, when he's making plays with his arm 
out of structure, all right? So I really don't see a super high-end MVP caliber quarterback here, and that's on the upside, guys. I think he could be a decent NFL starter someday, but he has some development in order to get there, and I just don't really see the super high-end upside that I see with guys like Caleb Williams and Jaden Daniels and Drake May, and even Michael Penix Jr., who I think uh, does a much better job at identifying open receivers down the field, reading coverages, reading safety rotations, all these different things that pro quarterbacks have to do. I think Penix does an incredibly incredible job at that, whereas McCarthy, if he sees a rotating coverage or if there's something that confuses him in a post-snap rotation, he's just going to take the check down and he's super conservative in that way. And that really does remind me of Daniel Jones, who is one of the most conservative passers in the National Football League. So for me, guys, I think if J.J. McCarthy gets taken in like that top six range, I think it's going to be a similar route for him as we've seen with Daniel Jones, where it's just going to be okay. He's going to be conservative with the football. When he throws it down the field, it's not going to be all that consistent. Uh, but even, even that, if you give him the right situation and you allow him to grow a little bit, I do think that he could become a decent NFL starter. But I really don't see like the super high-end upside that you would need in order to take him with a top five pick. I break down J.J. McCarthy's full scouting report in a video we put out earlier on the Commander's Report. So I'm going to put the link to that one in the comments and description so you can get my full thoughts on the Michigan quarterback here. So now, before we get into the rest of today's show, go down there in the comments section and let me know what you guys think about McCarthy. Do you think that he is worth a top five pick? in the 2024 NFL Draft. I certainly don't think so, but let me know what you guys think. Give me a yes or no down there in the comments section to let me know what you guys think. Now let's move over to Scary Terry McLaurin here, where an NFL analyst, Matt Lombardo, says that the commanders should trade Terry to the Buffalo Bills after the Bills shipped out Stephon Diggs to the Houston Texans earlier this week. This is what Lombardo had to say about Scary Terry. Given that the Washington Commanders are seemingly aiming to fast track a rebuild, the Bills would be wise to gauge general manager Adam Peters' interest in dealing the dynamic pass catcher Terry McLaurin. And this is the trade idea that he presented in his article here where the Bills would get Scary Terry and they get the commander's uh, second second round pick this year. So number 40 overall. And in exchange, the commanders would get the Bills first round pick, number 28 overall. So that'd give the commanders uh, a second first round pick this year, plus a second round pick in 2025, uh, which would definitely help them out as they continue to build this team heading into uh, the 2025 campaign. Now, let me know what you guys think down there in the comments section. If you're Adam Peters, the commander's GM, would you accept this trade? Type A for accept or type D for decline. Let me know how you're feeling about this potential trade idea. Now, personally, guys, I would not make this deal. And the answer to that is pretty simple. I don't think you're getting enough value for somebody like Terry McLaurin, who has been absolutely unbelievable throughout his career, despite having terrible quarterback play. I mean, when has this guy ever had even a top 20 quarterback throwing him the football? It hasn't happened. And he has been in a thousand yard plus receiver every single year in his career since 2020. So over the last four years, he's been a super high-end talent. He's somebody that's able to go, and he's able to get open, and he's able to create after the catch. He does it all, man. He's got good ball skills, good uh, hands, all these different things. Terry McLaurin brings to the table. You're going to need to provide a little bit more value, at least in my opinion, in order to get a trade for Terry McLaurin Done. So this is what I would want if I were GM Adam Peters. I would want the first round pick this year from the Bills, number 28. I'd want their second round pick next year in 2025. And I'd want an additional fourth round pick this year at 128 overall. And then I'd give the Bills Terry, and then I'd give them a third round pick. I'm not going to be giving them a, another second round pick in this deal. No way. I think that this is much more compensatory with the value of Terry McLaurin. Uh, and Matt Lombardo, I think, gives it a nice go of it here. But if you're going to be giving, giving up Terry McLaurin, you better be getting a pretty darn good deal. Now, before I go here, we do have some bad news here on the Commander's Report. And that is that uh, quarterback, recently signed quarterback Marcus Mariota, is going to be wearing the number zero next year as a backup quarterback. Is the first player in Commander's or NFL history as a quarterback to wear this number. And I just got to say it right now. 
This guy is not good enough to wear this number. I mean, you have to be incredibly good to wear number zero, at least in my opinion. And Marcus Mariota not only is not good enough to wear this number, he's nowhere close to it. He's been one of the worst quarterbacks that has hit the NFL field over the last two years. He completely crumbled in Atlanta. When they replaced him with Desmond Ritter, he ran away to his mom or whatever. And then he goes to Philly, and he does worse than Tanner McKee when they both got opportunities to play last year. So I don't want to hear anything from Marcus Mariota here and he should not have gotten number zero. I mean, this is such a cool number, especially for a quarterback. I mean, and this is just not the vibe whatsoever. A backup quarterback wearing number zero. You know what, man? I actually think that it is a little bit of a little bit appropriate here because number zero, that's the exact amount of touchdowns he's going to be throwing as a member of the Washington Commanders. All right, that's going to be it for today's show, guys. I really do appreciate all of your support. Make sure you click that subscribe button right now for daily and free Commanders coverage all throughout the 2024 offseason. All right, one segment in the books, Mr. Smith, coming up here, Commanders Report Live Mailbag. Make sure you guys get your questions down there. Hashtag Commanders or Super Chat to get your question on today's mailbag. Uh, I'm going to say this right now. Uh, the, only ch the only way you guarantee your question gets on is if you super chat, okay, and then hashtag commanders. Uh, if you use hashtag commanders, then Smitty gets to decide who gets in. And I don't know. Discretion. I don't, I don't know if you want to leave it up to Smitty. All right. I'm a, I'm a Seahawks fan. Like, do you really want me deciding who gets to know ball between the commanders football or not? I mean, Super Chat is the only way that guarantees you on the mailbag. But, hey, we need some questions in general right now. So, who knows? Maybe Hashtag Commanders will definitely get you on the Super <laughs> Chat here in just a couple of minutes. All right. I need you to take over here for just a little bit, Smitty. Okay. And give some shout-outs in the chat. All right. So, everybody type Smitty in the chat, and he'll give you some shout-outs here, man. Type Smitty down below. I have to take care of a little something real quick, but I'll be right back. All right, all right, all right. Who are we at? Where are we at right now, Commanders fans? Craigster saying J.J. McCarthy and Jaden Daniels are the highest risk. I, I can kind of agree with that. Um, you know, seems like Caleb Williams obviously uh, is going to go number one, but he's by far the safest prospect out of all of them. We got Timmy Jones saying Smitty. Demarius Young saying Smitty. Phil Mahood, Phil Mahood, Phil Mahood saying Smitty. We appreciate you. Eugene getting a question in there. Hey, I, 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 don't, I like Eugene's question. That, that, that's a cool one. I'm not sure if, uh, if the other team involved would, would love that. But Zach, Zach with a good question as well. Eugene saying Smitty with a little microphone bounce in there. We'd love to see it. Pedix is the highest risk with injuries, says Omar's burner. Hey, I mean, listen, a lot of guys... Uh, Joe Burrow had injury concerns coming out of college, and he's perennially hurt in the NFL. You think the Bengals regret drafting Joe Burrow? I don't think so. All right, I'm back, folks. Uh, I had to take care of a little something there, but make sure you guys continue to get your questions down there in the chat. Smitty, how many questions we got? Right now, we have... We got enough? We have two so far, so we need more. We only have two? We only have two. We need more questions, folks. Hashtag Commanders. Or Super Chat to get on the mailbag today. All right, there we go. Omar's Burner getting one in there. Ooh, okay. I tell, you, I tell you what, Smitty. We might, if we don't have enough questions here, we might just move on to the third segment here, the day two draft targets, and okay. then go to the, do the mailbag last if we're not getting questions. Potentially, potentially. Uptown Dre saying Smitty with Ds. You think I'm mid, brother? Oh, no. Oh, no, no. <laughs> we're getting some more here. Gary V. Gary V in the chat. He's got a good question as well as Omar's Burner. So now we're up to now we're up to four. So that's good. We need at least a couple more. We need we at least, least a couple, couple more. more. Make on. sure you guys get the I mean, right now it seems like if you have a question, this is the perfect time to do it. And you, you don't even have to super chat. There we go. Curran getting a question on. All there. you guys gotta do is put hashtag commanders along with your question and you'll get on the program here. We got about 150 people watching worldwide around the planet right now, so thank you to everybody spending part of your Thursday here with us, talking some Commanders football. All right. I think we'll probably be good. Yeah, we got uh, we have five now. You think five's enough? Hmm. I mean, listen, I know you love you, you love, the I love the I love the talk. You love the talk, so you can make these you can, you can answer these questions pretty in-depth <laughs> if you like. Plus, oh, uh, yeah. 
Okay. But how, how about this? Can we get two more? Can we get two more questions? And I think I think we'd be able to do it. Let's get it. Let's get two more questions, and then we'll get into the mailbag. Jesse, so- Rusty, Mike McNeil. I know you guys always. You guys all got questions. I know you guys all got questions. Uh, Nicole got to, gets a question in there. Let's go. Ellie Barefoot, Washington Commanders fan, walking in here. Wow, look, How we look doing? at that. <laughs> How we doing? Uh, we need to slap Smitty, folks. Somebody send in that $20 super chat and we'll slap him. Get those questions in. Hashtag commanders or super chat. Need one more question. Again, if you don't use hashtag commanders, you can't get on the show. I am a Jaden Daniels guy. At this point, I am. Okay. All right. Shout out to Allie Barefoot. We got some more in there. Let's get it going right now, Smitty. Okay. So we'll get into this mailbag here in just a second. And while we're, while we're in the mailbag, if you have a question that comes up, you can still put in hashtag commanders or super chat to get on this week's mailbag, guys. I love talking Commanders football with you. I want to give you guys a voice. I want to have your voices heard so it's not just me yapping up here all day. So I really do appreciate all of your support. appreciate all the people that come in and watch our uh, live watch our live shows every single week. You guys are the absolute best. And you better believe when we get to the draft, day one, day t- number two pick, oh my goodness, man. It's going to be a party here on the Commanders Report. Can't wait to share it with you guys. Let's ride. Somebody send in that 20. We need a 20. I got, the, I got the tortillas right here, ready to go. Smitty's never been slapped on the show before. He's a Seattle Seahawks fan. I mean, we got to make this happen, guys. All right, we need to make this happen. Somebody send in that 20 so I can slap the crap out of Smitty. Please. It's been a long week. I need, I need to let off some steam here, if you know what I'm saying. All right, man. Let's see. Smitty is just taking care of something real quick here, and then we'll get into the mailbag. Make sure you guys use hashtag commanders if you haven't already. And don't go anywhere because we've still got day two draft targets for the Washington Commanders coming up on the show as well. It's Mr. Smith. How are we doing here? All right, he says we're ready to roll, so let's get rolling here. The Commanders Report mailbag coming at you here. Uh, looks like we got enough questions. Fantastic. I see Jesse's in here. I see Phil is in here. Uptown Dre is here. Eugene is here. We got Demirius here. We got Nicole. We got Mike. We got a good crew here today, Mr. Smitty. All right. So without further ado, let's get into this week's Commander's Report mailbag coming at you right now. The NFL draft gets closer and closer by today. And today on the Commander's Report, I'm going to be answering your questions on the Burgundy and gold from you, the fans of the Commander's Report. But before we get into today's questions, I love getting this opportunity to address you guys in the, in the fan base uh, directly. If you want to join our mailbags, you want to get your question on a future edition of the Commander's Report mailbag, make sure you click that subscribe button today and join us for our Commander's Report live shows every single Thursday, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, where you have your opportunity to have your voice heard and get your questions, your comments, your Commander's mock drafts, whatever the case may be, right here on the channel. So if you want to join the most interactive Commander's fan community right here on the YouTube platform, what are you waiting for? Make sure you click that subscribe button right now. So I'll pause and open it up for questions here, starting with Zach, who says, do we believe Schefter saying Daniels is penciled in at number two. I mean, so to be clear, uh, Schefter, he left it kind of open that, you know, the commanders could go another direction, but it really does seem like the, all the reporting coming out, aside from that one report from, I think it was Pelissero, that they're thinking about McCarthy, and that's based on other teams reporting and not even from within the commanders organization. I think everything that you're hearing from within the commanders organization is that they like Daniels, and that's going to be the pick. Now, you've also heard from guys like Dan Quinn, the head coach, and GM Adam Peters, that they haven't decided on a quarterback yet, and that very well could be the case. They're doing their due diligence on all of these guys, and they're trying to identify who they believe is the next great quarterback 
of this football team. For me personally, as somebody that has gone into the film, somebody that has gone over the numbers, somebody that has done the research, I think that Jaden Daniels is the right choice. I think that he's the best balance of high upside with high floor and good footwork and good mechanics and all these different things that he brings to the table. Uh, I, I would be okay with Drake May, even though I'm not sure if he's a great fit uh, given the things that he needs to develop heading into the league. Then we got one from Eugene here, and he says, could Washington be planning a coup to get number one pick from Chicago collecting all these picks? No. Uh, Chicago is in love with Caleb Williams. That's why they got rid of Justin Fields. Remember, they like Justin Fields. All right, They think that he's a good quarterback, and that's why they were asking for a second, third round pick for him. Eventually, of course, he went to the Steelers for a conditional sixth. Uh, so obviously the rest of the NFL disagreed with them, but I think that they love Caleb Williams. That's going to be the pick. All the signs are pointing that that's going to be the pick for Chicago, and there's going to be nothing Washington can do about it. I would love for Caleb Williams to be the quarterback of the Commanders because I think, at least in my opinion, he is the best quarterback prospect I have ever scouted. Uh, and in, on, and it's, that's kind of crazy to say because I've been doing this for a while now. But, uh, you know, Caleb, super special player, but he's going to be a Chicago Bear uh, and you're left with kind of what's left if you're the Washington Commanders. Then we got one from John Cena here. He says, what are the pros and cons of drafting Jaden Daniels at number two overall? So the pros with Jaden is that he's got great touch on his deep ball, super catchable football. I think that the mental processing is pretty good. I think he's pretty good at getting to his check down when he needs to get there. The quick game stuff is there as well. Uh, I think that he sees... Uh, and, and reads defenses to the deep portion of the field exceedingly well. There's a reason why he was so effective when targeting 20-plus yards down the field last year, and it wasn't just because of Malik Neighbors and Brian Thomas. Like, that's a big part of it, don't get me wrong, but part of that was Jaden knowing uh, what he could take advantage of given what the defense was giving him. Plus, he's an electric runner. I think the second he comes into the National Football League, he's a top-three rusher in the National Football League, Really special in that department as well. Plus, he has really clean pocket footwork, and he's got a really compact, quick, and really efficient release uh, with really smooth throwing mechanics. So I really like all that stuff from Jaden. But with the cons here is that I, I worry about the injury stuff because he is extremely skinny, and when you watch him on film, he doesn't protect his body very well. Because he's so dynamic, he never wants to give up his body and slide. He always wants to go to the end zone and get the touchdown. And given, you know, granted, he's a great athlete, electric, all those things, but he also takes a ton of huge hits on film that are just really scary, especially heading into the NFL where these guys are really going to be laying the wood on him. Uh, pause. And then, you know, another thing that's kind of uh, concerning with Daniels is his ability to throw over the middle of the field. Uh, he doesn't do it very much on his LSU film. It's either down the field, like a fade, a post, a go route, throwing it deep down the field, a bomb, or he's throwing it short, or he's deciding to run it. All right, there's not a whole lot of that intermediate game on his film. You definitely want to see more of it. Uh, it's certainly possible that that gets developed in the league, uh, but the modern NFL is targeting the middle of the field, and Jaden Daniels just didn't really do that a whole lot on his college film. So let's see you guys. Let me know down there in the comments section, is Jaden Daniels the next great Washington quarterback? Let me know what you guys think down there by giving me a yes or a no for today's pinned comment. YouTube's going to throw, throw you an ad break here in just a couple of seconds. And when that happens, take advantage of that time by answering today's pinned question with a yes or a no. So now we got one from HTTR Prod and it says, how do you feel about our O-line going into next season? You got to get a left tackle. And maybe even two tackles in the NFL draft, man. Like, you got Tyler Biotish, pretty decent center, okay? I like that one. Sam Cosby's a good right guard, had a really good – he was the only offensive lineman that had a good season last year for this team. Then you get Nick Allegretti and Michael Dieter, and you're probably going to have a competition between those two for the left guard spot. I think either one of those guys is better than what you had last year. Uh, then you got – uh, Cornelius Lucas and Andrew Wiley as your tackle options, and I don't love either one of those. I think Cornelius is a really good swing tackle option, but he's not a starting left tackle. So I think you have to address offensive tackle in the draft, and I think you have to think about maybe getting uh, a guard in maybe day three of the draft this year as well to potentially be a future starter. So definitely, I mean, this was arguably the worst offensive line in football last year. There's a lot of work that needs to be done, and still, as we approach the NFL draft, I think you have to take an offensive tackle by the end of round two. 
Then we got one from Gary V here. It says, is Jamin Davis gone after this season? It's very possible, man. They, they're bringing in a bunch of players uh, at the position. Of course, they brought in Bobby Wagner, Frankie Luvu, and a couple others as well. And they might even draft somebody as well. So, I mean, Jamin Davis, I think that he had a much better season when he was on the field last year. Uh, than in his previous seasons. I think he's gotten better every single season he's been here. Uh, but maybe he's just not exactly the type of player that they are looking for in terms of what they want from the inside linebacker position. And by they, I'm talking about Dan Quinn and Joe Witt Jr., uh, the defensive coordinator. So I, I, I think Jamin Davis is probably gone after this season. I think that'd be a pretty fair assumption to make. Now, before we get into the rest of the questions on today's Commander's Report mailbag, let's have a word from our sponsor here, at Prize Picks, you can go to prizepicks.com slash CLNS or download the Prize Picks app today. And Prize Picks has got specials for new and returning users alike for the start of the MLB season. When you head on over to prizepicks.com slash CLNS or download the Prize Picks app today. Football season may be over, folks, but the action on the diamond is just heating up. Get in on the excitement with Prize Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app, where you can turn your baseball knowledge into serious cash. And that is if you know ball. Now, you take a look at what a typical prize picks projection looks like. So you're going to have a bunch of different stat projections at your disposal here, and you can choose more or less on any stat category you want. So here we got Mookie Betts, more total bases at 1.5. Mitch Keller uh, hits allowed 5.5. We're going to take the more on that. He's been struggling a little bit. And then Fernando Tatis Jr., that's actually one of their special promotions and it's called Demons and Goblins. This is a demon one where if Fernando Tatis Jr. hits a home run here, uh, we're going to make a pretty decent penny here with our friends at Prize Picks. The 2024 MLB season is now off and running, and you can pick more or less right now to make some money from the comfort of your couch while you watch your favorite team play. Prize Picks is super simple. All you do is pick more than or less than on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. You can get started right now if you haven't already at prizepicks.com slash CLNS or download the Prize Picks app and get a first-time deposit match of $100. Again, it's prizepicks.com slash CLNS uh, and use our code CLNS for a first deposit match up to $100. You can pick more or you can pick less. It's that easy with our friends at Prize Picks. Then we got one from Demirius Young. What's up, Demirius? Says, what are your sleeper wide receivers on day two or three? Um, you know, if, there's so many good wide receivers. It's hard to pick like a true, a, 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 a true sleeper. Now, somebody uh, that I do think is going to be a sleeper. I can't remember his first name. It's either Javon or Jerry, but his last name's Coker, and he's from uh, he's from Holy Cross. Okay, and he's not even on the Pro Football Focus big board right now. But I've been going through all the wide receiver prospects here. And I got to Coker's film from Holy Cross, and Lord knows it was tough to get Holy Cross film. But when I turned it on, man, this guy can freaking fly. And then I went back to my notes on him from the Senior Bowl, and he's damn good too, man. He was winning a bunch in the one-on-ones. So he's somebody that's probably going to go on day three. Uh, I can't remember his first name, but his last name is Coker, and he's from Holy Cross, super small school. Uh, so I think that on day three, that's probably the one wide receiver true sleeper in this draft. But like, there's like 20, 25, 30 guys in this draft class at the wide receiver position that are probably going to be good starters in the league. Then we got another one here from Zach, and he says, uh, Commanders is trading back into the first round a lock. I wouldn't say it's a lock. I'd say it's a possibility for sure especially if like one of the bigger name left tackle prospects starts falling a little bit, like a Troy Fotano or an Alufashano, you know, somebody like that that just falls a little bit. Uh, I could certainly see the commanders uh, putting together some picks. I mean, they got six picks in the top 100 picks. All right, first three rounds, you got, you got, a, you got th six picks. So you definitely have the ammo to move up if you need to. Another possibility is that if there's a really good edge rusher that's still available, like if they love Leatu Latu out of UCLA, if they love Jared Verse out of Florida State, they could certainly trade back into the first and take an edge rusher. Uh, so they definitely have a big need at left tackle. That needs to be addressed. They definitely have a big need at number one edge rusher. You got to find a way to address both of those needs with the six picks that you have at your disposal. Watch out for Adam Peters to be aggressive uh, towards the end of day one of the draft. 
Then we got one from Tank here. He says, do your concerns with Cliff Kingsbury go away if the commanders take Jaden Daniels? Is he a good fit for his offense? So they don't go away. I think they get alleviated as much as possible with Jaden Daniels because uh, the thing about Cliff is I don't think he develops quarterback talent very well. Now, you might be saying to yourself, Jack, he had Patrick Mahomes and Baker Mayfield, and he's worked with Kyler Murray. And, you know, like, how can you say he doesn't develop quarterback talent? Well, I mean, Patrick Mahomes was arguably one of the most raw quarterback prospects, like, of all time. Like, people are, like, guaranteeing that he was going to be a bust coming out of Texas Tech. This is the greatest quarterback of our generation under Cliff Kingsbury's watch. He played three seasons at Texas Tech, developed him zero zip not a terrible footwork coming out of the Red Raiders, a terrible decision-making, mental processing wasn't where it needed to be. He had to sit an entire season behind Alex Smith before he was ready to become the Patrick Mahomes that we know today because Cliff Kingsbury, he just kind of says, hey, man, go out there and wing it. I mean, look at the way Caleb Williams played at USC last year. Complete wing, I mean, just completely winging things out there. And that's just the way Cliff Kingsbury operates where he's like, I'm going to put a super talented quarterback in my offense and I'm not going to teach him footwork. I'm not really going to hone in on the decision-making and the mental processing. I'm just going to let that guy go out and be him and be and kind of be like the Johnny Manziel, the Kyler Murray, the super playmaking, out-of-structure type guy, right? But that doesn't develop quarterback talent. Now, the reason why I like Jaden Daniels over a guy like Drake May in this system is because Daniels already has good footwork. He already has good throwing mechanics. So he doesn't need development in those areas, whereas Drake May has awful footwork. He needs major development in that area, and there's no way I can see Cliff Kingsbury developing that area of his game. And with bad footwork leads to bad accuracy, which is exactly what we saw from May this past year with the Tar Heels. So I think Jaden Daniels is the better option. I think he's the more clean prospect. Also, he's got that electric rushing ability to make up for some of the deficiencies in Cliff Kingsbury's scheme, at least in my opinion. So I think Jaden Daniels gives Cliff the best possible chance at success here in Washington, but I can't say my concerns with him completely go away uh, with Daniels here in Washington. Now, let me know down there in the comments section, how confident are you in the new OC here in Washington, Cliff Kingsbury? I'm definitely skeptical of him given his history, both in college and in the National Football League as an offensive play caller and as a quarterback developer. But let me know what you guys think down there in the comments section. Scale it for me from 1 to 10. 1 being not confident at all to 10 being he's going to be the best offensive coordinator this team has ever seen. Let me know what you guys think down there in the comments section, how you feel about Coach Cliff. Let me go on from Ryan Flint. It says, how disappointed are you that we're utilizing specialized running backs in Eckler and Robinson? Why don't they understand defenses will key on, key on who, who, who is in? Uh, so this is, this is a good question here, uh, Ryan. Uh, I would say, <laughs> and I think this has a little bit to do with like the Cliff Kingsbury thing, man. It's very predictable. That's the thing. That's one of my biggest issues with the offense is that first, and, first down, a lot of times it's either going to be inside zone or counter run or a screen. All right, it's pretty predictable. And defenses can really key in on that. And like you said, man, if you're going to have specialized running backs in this way, where Eckler's going to be kind of your scat back, your receiving back, your third down back, whatever you want to call it, and then Robinson's going to be your early down option. I mean, I think most teams have this kind of setup, though, where you have that third down specialist, and then you have your early down. So I don't think it's that big of a deal, but I think it definitely points to maybe the predictability of this offense that you're bringing in with Cliff Kingsbury. And that definitely worries me at least a little bit. Then we got one from Phil, and he says, who's our left tackle in 2024? Um, if I have to guess right now, if they don't trade back up into round one, I think it could be Jordan Morgan out of Arizona. I think Morgan is ready to play right away. I don't think he's in need of much development in terms of his footwork and his hand placement and his instincts for the game. He's not the most like physically dominating so he's not going to be like an all-pro caliber guy, or he might not even make a Pro Bowl in his career, but could he be a solid day one starter in the National Football League at left tackle? I think so. And, you know, you've got a guy that's coming in most likely, Jaden Daniels. If it's not him, that'll be Drake May. You want to protect your quarterback, man, and I just don't trust Cornelius Lucas to be your bona fide starting left tackle heading into this year. I'd much rather go out and get a rookie 
whether at the trade back into round one or get one right at the beginning of round two. And I think Jordan Morgan could be there because there's a really good offensive tackle class. And if he is, I would go out and get the Wildcat left tackle uh, with the number six, 36 overall pick. So before we get to the rest of the questions today, make sure you click that thumbs up icon if you are a real one. I really do appreciate all of your guys' support. And if you like what we do here, we give you guys premium commanders content for free every single day here on the platform. Do your part here. Click that thumbs up icon, and I greatly appreciate it. Then we got one from Omar's Burner here. What's up, baby? It says, thoughts on taking JJ in round one and Tez Walker in round two. I hate it. I hate both of those. J.J. McCarthy, I think, is like, I compare him to Daniel Jones, where, you know, he's got a good arm, not a special arm, pretty good throwing on the run, uh, super conservative, not going to bomb it down the field. If Even if he has open receivers down the field, he's going to take his check down if he's not 100% sure. So I, I think J.J. McCarthy is Daniel Jones. And then, Devon, and then Tez Walker was arguably the worst wide receiver at the Senior Bowl this year because uh, he can't catch anything and he can't get open. All right, I know he's fast and I know he's big, but you look at the film with Drake May, the thing that sticks out is how many drops uh, Tez Walker has on his film. It is striking how bad this man has, is at football and people have him as like a second-round pick. I mean, I just don't understand it, man. He's big and he's fast, but that's about it in my opinion. Tez Walker should be like a fifth-round wide receiver, at least in my eyes. Then we got one from Curran. He says, do you think it's possible Jaden Daniels does better over the next five years than Caleb? Is it possible? Sure. Could Caleb, could Caleb get hurt? Absolutely. Uh, and, obvi and like I said before, Jaden Daniels does have perennial MVP potential. right? I think that he is a much more polished thrower of the football coming into the league than Lamar Jackson was, but Lamar significantly developed when he came into the league in that regard. If Jaden Daniels makes similar steps and he's able to throw over the middle with more, uh, with, with more uh, uh, frequency and with more consistency, then that's really going to be a game changer for him. And it's just so hard to guard a guy like Jaden Daniels, somebody that can beat you with his arm, throws a super catchable football, clean mechanics, and then he combines that with really electric rushing ability. I mean, it is really a marvel to watch. We all watched it with him at LSU this year. It was simply unbelievable. So is it possible Sure, it's possible, but Caleb Williams is the best quarterback I've ever scouted uh, in the seven years I've been doing this, and that's just my opinion. But he's also going into a great situation with DJ Moore and Keenan Allen and DeAndre Swift and a good OC and Shane Waldron and a defense that was really starting to play well at the end of last year. And they're probably going to get Roma Dunze at number nine. I mean, that's going to be the best situation a number one pick has ever gone into. Uh, so I think that I think the chances of Caleb being better in five years are pretty significant. Then we got one from Patrick Starr. It says, if you had to guess which position the commanders take at number 36, what would it be? My best guess is left tackle because beyond that, I'm not sure if you're going to be able to get somebody you trust to play on the field week one. All right, now, because this is a really special offensive tackle class, you might be able to get one of those guys at pick number 36. Uh, but I think they're going to be in short supply, and you better get one quickly. Uh, so I think Jordan Morgan is somebody that you definitely need to be watching out for. I think left tackle is definitely a position Washington is going to want to lock up uh, shortly after getting their quarterback at number two overall. Now let me know down there in the comments section, what position should Washington target in round two? Should it be left tackle like I want to do? Should it be number one edge rusher, which is certainly a plausible explanation? Should they go get a corner? Let me know what you guys think down there in the comments section. What position should Washington target in round two? That'll be it for this week's mailbag, guys. I appreciate everything that you guys do for this channel. Without you guys, we would not be here. So make sure you click that subscribe button right now if you want to join our family before we get really get into this really juicy commander's draft content just days before the 2024 NFL draft. I appreciate the heck out of you. Make sure you click that subscribe button. Until next time, hail to the commanders. Two down, one to go, Mr. Smitty. Yes, sir. And you know what? Let's get into it ASAP. All right? I don't want to wait. I got my day two draft targets for the Washington commanders here. I don't want to wait. I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to... Give the, leave these people in the dark any longer. Let's get into this segment. 
right now. We got over 150 people watching. We got 100 people that have liked the show. Make sure you click that thumbs up icon if you haven't already. I want to get to 150 likes before we sign off on the show today. Make sure you click that thumbs up icon. Help us get to 150. If we can get there, I'll slap Smitty in the face with a tortilla. How about that? All right, we don't even need the $20 super chat. If we can just get to 150 likes by the end of the show, I will slap producer Smitty in the face with a tortilla. He loves the Seattle Seahawks. But guess what, man? If you're a producer on this show and you're not a fan of the Commanders, you got to pay. You got to pay the piper here, Mr. Smith. See my guy Ty Man the Buckeye in here saying, oh, well. Listen, Ty Man just wants to see me lose. Ty Man, just, he don't want to see me up. So, uh, listen, uh, get 150 likes. We need 45 more, 37 more now, and uh, we'll, we'll get some tortillas slapping around. It's, it's slap the Smitty day, all right? So let's get to 150 likes. If you haven't clicked that thumbs up icon, do that now. But in the meantime, let's get into my day two draft targets for the Washington Commanders. Oh! <laughs> We've got a slap, ladies and gentlemen. A $20 super chat from Mike has bad knees. And he says, slap him twice. Well, Mike, we need to get to 150 to add that second slap. But no matter what, we've got at least one slap coming here, baby. So if anyone wants to join Mike and get these slaps going, every $20 super chat that we get, we're adding a slap. Let's go, baby. Slap the Smitty Day. I love it. I love it. All right. Without further ado, let's get into this day two draft targets video for the Washington Commanders coming at you right now. It's not a secret to anybody that's been following the Washington Commanders lately that they're probably going to take a quarterback with the number two overall pick in the 2024 NFL Draft, and that's their only first-round pick. So the big question becomes, what will the Commanders do with their whopping five picks on round, in rounds two and three in this year's NFL Draft? I've got the answers coming up here on today's show, but before we get into that, make sure you click that subscribe button right now for premium Commander's Draft coverage for free every single day right here on the Commander's Report. The latest Commander's Draft news and rumors, who they're targeting, in-depth scouting reports on all the top prospects in this year's NFL Draft class, positional rankings, and also weekly Commander's Mock Drafts. All of that is 100% free. Other places make you pay like $5 a month or $10 a month to get this kind of content not here at the Commander Support. All you got to do is click that subscribe button to join our family. So let's just start here with the assumption that they're going to take a quarterback in round one with that number two overall pick, whether that be Jaden Daniels or Drake May or, God forbid, J.J. McCarthy. A quarterback's going to be coming off the board. All right, Dan Quinn and Adam Peters have said so themselves. They're probably taking a quarterback in round one. So the big question is heading into rounds two and three, day two of the NFL draft, what are the remaining team needs that this team needs to address? Well, there are five main needs, and really these last two are wants more than true needs, but I think you need to get a left tackle, you need to get an edge rusher, and you need to get a cornerback of some sort sometime during day two. So let's go over these positions one at a time. Let's start with the biggest need, at least in my opinion, which is to go and get an offensive tackle that can play on the left side of the offensive line. I think this is absolutely paramount because you look at the offensive line and how it shakes out right now. Cornelius Lucas is expected to be the starting left tackle for this football team. You take Braden Daniels in the middle rounds last year, but I don't think he's up for the job either. Andrew Wiley, you're paying him a lot of money still, so I do think he'll be the starting right tackle. But for me, man, you want to get somebody that's going to be a bookend left tackle for you for the foreseeable future. And I definitely think that this is a draft class to be able to do it, all right? There's so many prospects still available in round two who can survive at starting left tackle in the National Football League in year one. You know, there's so many guys in this year's class. I mean, most, most draft classes, there's like maybe three or four guys that can survive at left tackle right away in the National Football League, and you have to get them in round one. But in this year's class, it's so deep, and so and there's so many good players. I do think that you can get a quality starting left tackle 
on day one in the National Football League at the top of round two. And there's two guys I have in mind specifically, and that's Jordan Morgan out of Arizona. And then I'm going to butcher this, but Kieran Omega, Omega I don't, I, I'm definitely butchering that, but he's out of Yale. I think both of these guys maybe don't have the high-end upside to be like a perennial all-pro guy or a Pro Bowl level guy, but I think that they're going to be solid left tackles in the league to start their careers, and they're going to be very steady throughout their uh, career trajectory because they don't have really have the high-end kind of physical traits, but I do think that they have the balance and the foot technique and the footwork and the hand placement and all the things that you need to survive on the edge in the National Football League. I think both of these guys have that, so look out for these two names at pick number 36, and specifically Jordan Morgan. And if he's there, man, just don't play around. Don't, don't, don't. Play the odds here or don't, don't risk it and hope that he falls to number 40. Just take him, all right? There's not that many, all right? I've, I've said that there are uh, – this is a specific, uh, really good offensive tackle class where you can get a guy like this in round two, but they're going to be in short supply. Uh, even at the top of round two. So if, when you get there, if he's here, I think Jordan Morgan is, a t is the type of guy where you go get him at the top of round two, and if he's there at number 36, that's the guy I would take. Now let me know, who's your guy down there in the comments section? Who do you want the Washington Commanders to pick at number 36 overall? This will be our pinned comment today. So YouTube's going to throw you an ad break here in just a couple of seconds. When that happens, take advantage of that time by going down there into the comments section and letting me know who you want the Washington Commanders to take at the top of round two. So now let's move on to edge rusher because this is a very interesting position from my perspective because I think that there is enough edge rushers where you can get a guy in round three, but with the way that the Commanders handled uh, the, the edge rusher position in free agency, I think edge needs to probably be addressed on day two of the NFL draft. And the reason for that is that they don't have a true number one guy on this roster right now. I mean, I like Dorrance Armstrong. I think that he's a good number two option. I think that he's had some good years in this league, but as a dominant number one guy that, you know, they're going to have, that you have to absolutely stop and you have to put double teams on, no way. I mean, I think he's a good number two guy. And then Cleveland Furl and Dante Fowler Jr. and the other guys that they've picked up are decent pieces but they're missing that one guy that you put on one side of the, of the defensive line that just strikes fear in the opposing offense. They don't have that presence right now, uh, and they have to go get that at some point on day two, in my opinion. So the three guys that I don't think are going to be there in round two are the top three guys in this class. Leatu Latu out of UCLA, Dallas Turner out of Alabama, and Jared Verse out of Florida State. Now, it's possible that if one of these three guys starts to fall, you trade back up into the first round and you take one of them there. Uh, but if you're going to try to wait to pick number 36 or pick number 40 to get one of these three guys, I hate to break it to you, it's probably not going to happen. So let's talk about the guys that could potentially fall to pick number 36 and pick number 40. So these are the round two guys that I would target. Jonah Ellis out of Utah, I think is severely underrated in this class. He's got all... You know, he, he's not like Chop Robinson where he's going to beat you with that incredible first step and speed and bend around the edge. He's going to beat you with power, and he's going to beat you with finesse and his hand-fighting ability. He's got a bunch of moves at his disposal, and he uses all of them well and with intelligence, which is something that I really look for. Plus, he's got the size to really hold up as a run defender in this 4-3 scheme that Dan Quinn is bringing to Washington. Then Darius Robinson. Easily the best running uh, or the rush defender at the edge rusher position in this class, bar none, okay? He is fantastic. His anchor, you cannot move this guy off, off the spot. Watching this guy defend the run, it is a thing of beauty. And when it comes to pass rushing, he needs to develop a little bit. He only has one move at his disposal, which, which is a push-pull move. That he, It works well against college guys. It worked well at the Senior Bowl a lot. But is it going to work against the five, six-year all-pro left tackle? I'm not too sure about that. He's going to have to put a couple more moves into his bag. But he definitely has that high upside, and he can definitely fit as a 4-3 defensive end. Braylon Trice out of Washington, really polished pass rusher at this point in his career. Needs to work on the run defense a little bit, though. But at pick number 40, I wouldn't cry if the commanders ended up taking him there. And Chop Robinson... You know, if you trade down from pick number 40 and take him maybe a little bit lower 
in round two. I'd like that. Now, I understand Chops getting first round buzz right now because he does have an elite first step. He has incredible bend around the edge, and he's got incredible speed. And, I mean, if you're just not fast enough as a tackle, this guy's going to eat your lunch money. Uh, he's just going to take it. And, but at the end of the day, Chop Robinson is not ready to be an every down defensive end in the National Football League because he's a terrible run defender. Constantly in the wrong gap, bad tackler in open space. He needs a lot of work in that department, all right? So he, he's got number one edge rusher upside, which is why the commanders should be considering him. But he's not ready to take on that role right away, which puts him down further my list. Then if you can't get to an edge rusher in round two, say there's like a Kool-Aid McKinstry or something that's there in round two, and you have to take him. All right, fine. We'll, we'll, we'll move to round three and get our edge rusher here. Marshawn Nealon out of uh, Western Michigan uh, reminds me a lot of Brandon Graham uh, from the Philadelphia Eagles. Maybe not a true number one guy, but really, really productive. I think that's going to be Marshawn Nealon. Austin Booker, he's got a lot of nice physical traits, and he has a lot of moves in his bag, but he's not super intelligent with the way he deploys them. A lot of times, he, he puts out the wrong move, and it completely shuts him down. That's not something I love, but hopefully with development, NFL coaching, he can really put it together. Mohamed Kamara out of Colorado State, I compare to Shaq Barrett. I think he's got all the physical tools that you look for, long arms, a bull rush kind of mentality, all these different things, but he needs development with his finesse and his hand fighting ability. Then Xavier Thomas, I think, is one of the better value edge rushers in this class. Uh, he doesn't have the long arms you look for. He doesn't have the elite physical profile, but he's super polished in terms of his in terms of hand placement, his hand fighting ability, uh, and he's really good as a run defender as well. So if you have to get an edge rusher in round three, these are the guys that I would target. Now coming up here, more day two draft targets for your Washington Commanders for the other three positions that we haven't talked about yet. But before we get into those, I want to talk about today's sponsor at Game Time, which is the fastest and easiest way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater in your area. If you're somebody like, like me, that likes to get tickets last minute, then game time's gonna be perfect for you because not only do they have the lowest price guarantee on any ticket to any event, and it's not just sports guys, it's comedy, it's theater, it's concerts, all these different things, then you can get the lowest price guarantee and they have flash deals right before your event. So the longer you wait to get your tickets, the lower the prices get. It's absolutely fantastic. Plus they have a super easy to use user interface on their awesome app for you to take advantage of. Game Time is the only ticketing app that gives you complete peace of mind with your purchase. See the view from your seat before you buy so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. And Game Time also sends your tickets directly to your phone instead of your email, which is another convenient feature that Game Time provides. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with our friends at Game Time today by downloading the Game Time app, creating an account, and use code CHATSPORTS. That's one word, all caps, for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code CHATSPORTS for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. So now let's move on to the cornerback position for the Washington Commanders. And listen, you brought in Michael Davis in free agency. He's fine. All right. I think that he's a pretty good starting corner in the league. And it really does seem like the commanders are probably really, really hoping that Emmanuel Forbes, who they took number 16 overall last year, is going to bud into the number one corner that we all want him to be. All right. But what if that doesn't work out? Are you going to trust Benjamin St. Juice and Michael Davis as your number one and number two corners? Like, I, I, I just feel like you want to have another really good uh, cornerback prospect in this room. I like Quan Martin as your slot corner. That's what you drafted him to do in the second round last year, so I'm not worried about that. But, you know, is Michael Davis really a long-term option for you in that room? I don't think so. So here are the guys in round two that I would consider taking. All right, Kool-Aid McKinstry. Uh, he's not the tallest guy in the world, but he's got really good arm length, really good technique and press man coverage, and straight up, SEC offenses just avoided him this past year at Alabama. That's how good this cat is, and there's a possibility that he, re that he falls to round two because uh, he's been dealing with a foot injury and all these different things. I think Kool-Aid McKinstry, easy round one projection. I think he's going to be a really good player if he falls to number 36 you got to consider taking them. Then Terry and Arnold out of Alabama as well. A really speedy receiver. 
Uh, maybe not the long speed, in my opinion, but he's got the short area quicks that you look for, can survive and press, really good player as well. I have a round one projection on him, uh, and I really do think that if he's there at 36, you can think about taking him. And then at number 40 overall, I would really think about TJ Tampa at Iowa State. Long arms, physical, uh, you know, all these different things that you want out of a number one corner, especially in a press man system like Dan Quinn and Joe Witt Jr. are bringing here to Washington. So I like the fit there. Needs a little bit of, a, of development, but the commanders can deal with that. Then in round three, really like Kyrie Jackson out of Oregon. Reminds me a little bit of Richard Sherman in terms of the physical profile. No, he has a long way to go in his technique before he's Richard Sherman, all right? Don't get me wrong. There's a reason why he's going to go round three this year, but he's somebody that can absolutely develop into that menacing number one cornerback option on the outside. Uh, and that's something that I think Washington will be attracted to. Renardo Green uh, played more press man coverage than any corner in football during the course of his college career. A little bit undersized for a press corner, but you know he's somebody that has a ton of experience and really good technique when in press. So if you want somebody to play kind of right away, I think Renardo Green is an excellent option. Jarvis Brownlee Jr., way too grabby, way too many holding and defensive pass interference penalties. They're at Louisville, and it's probably going to get even worse in the pros, but he's super physical, long arms. He's got the physical profile that Washington is looking for. And then Andrew Phillips, uh, really nuanced corner in my opinion. Reminds me a lot of Ronald Darby, uh, where he's not the fastest guy in the world, but really good instincts, really good short area quicks. Uh, and he's not the biggest guy in the world. There's a reason why he's going round three, but I think he's going to be a starter in this league for a long time. So now, Let's shift from the perimeter on the defensive side of the ball to the perimeter on the offensive side of the ball and talk some wide receivers here because I think there's two specific types of wide receivers that the commanders are going to be looking for. They're going to be looking for bigger wide receivers who are a threat in the red zone, and then they're going to be looking for short area wide receivers that are great after the catch and kind of yak monsters, all right? So I don't think wide receiver is a, is a round two thing. For the commanders, I think it's probably going to be more offensive line, corner, edge rusher in round two. And then in round three, you have three picks in that round, man. You can absolutely go out and get a nice steal at the wide receiver position uh, during that period of the draft. So you look at the guys in round three that I would go out and get. If you're looking for somebody with size, Keon Coleman, Johnny Wilson, or Brendan Rice will do nicely. All right, Johnny Wilson in particular is 6'7". All right, he has some drop issues. He might, he's not the most fluid athlete, being that he's 6'7", all right, but he's somebody that I think could potentially be a wide receiver in this league. Uh, he's got a great physical profile. He's definitely a ball of clay that could develop into something really nice as a true X receiver. And then Keon Coleman and Brendan Rice aren't going to blow you away with their physical profiles, but they're bigger guys. They're going to be red zone threats in the National Football League, and they could be really good fits for what Washington wants here. And if you're looking for a yak machine, Malachi Corley out of Western Kentucky is being compared to Debo Samuel and Rasheed Rice for his ability, not as a route runner to get open down the field or anything like that, but we know how much Cliff Kingsbury wants to do screen passes on early downs with this commander's offense. Get the ball in Malachi Corley's hands in open space. He's going to make people pay. So he's somebody to definitely keep your eye on if he falls to round three. And then Malik Washington, he was top three in NCAA last year in yards after the catch. He's completely rocked up, pause. Uh, and, you know, he's somebody that's just really, really good player. And he's a much better route runner than Malachi Corley, even though he's quite a bit smaller. All right, now let's go over the safeties, okay? Because you have Jeremy Chin. You have Quan Martin, and you have Derek Forrest, all of which can play safety. Uh, I think Quan and Derek might rotate at free safety. Quan will probably play in the slot a lot more. Uh, but I think that what Washington could be looking for here is that Jeremy Chin's getting a bit older, so could you get a bigger safety to eventually replace Chin as the strong safety in this defense? I think that's absolutely possible on day three. And like, like wide receiver, this is probably going to be a round three position for the commanders. I don't really see them splurging on a safety in round two, especially with the needs at left tackle and at edge rusher. Uh, and because this is a lower value position and you're getting a guy to eventually be a starter, not as a, an immediate starter, I think it makes more sense that you get safety in round three. So there's definitely some guys to choose from here. Jaden Hicks, I think, is definitely the guy that Dan Quinn's going to want. Reminds me a lot of Cam Chancellor in terms of 
play style. Now, we all know that Cam Chancellor's arguably the best strong safety in the history of the National Football League. The guy just laid the wood on whoever came over the middle of the field. That's Jaden Hicks's game. Now, he needs to develop the game and all these different things to get to the level that a Cam Chancellor got to. But man, Dan Quinn had Cam Chancellor just menacing over the middle of the field. I think Jaden Hicks eventually can get on that level. Tyke Smith out of Georgia, I think he's severely underrated. Pro football focus has him as like a fifth round prospect. I have a round two grade on Tyke Smith, and that's about as high as I go on safeties. I think he's a fantastic player. Uh, I think the commanders would be extremely lucky to have him if he falls to round three. Cameron Kitchen, Sione Vaki, and James Williams as well, good players. Wouldn't mind to see them as a future strong safety option for the Washington Commanders. Now let me know, did I miss any key positions on today's show? Do you want to go out and get an inside linebacker? Do you want to get another, I guess I missed tight end today. I guess I just answered my own question. I should have done a little bit of tight ends today. But let me know down there in the comments section if I missed any other uh, big positions of need that we need to address by the end of day two. That'll be, at the, that'll be the end of today's show. I really do appreciate everybody for sticking with me through this one. I know it was a little bit of a longer one today. So make sure you guys click that subscribe button right now if you haven't already. Because if you made it to the end of this video, you're going to love the other content that we have here on the Commander Support. So make sure you click that subscribe button right now. And until next time, hail to the Commanders. All right, man. Slap the Smitty time. We got 148 people watching. We're 18 likes away from adding another slap. So if you haven't clicked that thumbs up icon yet, make sure you do that right now. Because we've got this tortilla right here. Uh, who sent in the super chat? My, my, my buddy Mike. Thanks to my buddy Mike, we are getting at least one slap in today. But if we can just get 17 more likes in the next three minutes, then I will add another slap to the total. And again, every $20 that's sent in is a slap for Smitty. So Smitty, come on here. Not, no, 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 get on the camera. Get on camera. We're going to put on a shot clock of three minutes for these people to get those thumbs up, to get those like buttons clicked. So how do you feel right now, man? Like, you feel like a boxer about to go into the ring? I, 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 got, I got to mentally prepare myself for this, don't I? Because um, you can ask Coop right now. I do not hold back with these slaps. I, I know. I, I've seen it in action before. Um, <laughs> I, I think I've only been slapped on, uh, on elsewhere at Chat Sports um, with the, one of the smaller tortillas. But we got the big dogs today. So uh, I got to brace myself. Yeah, yes, you do. Because I've, I've got a... I cannot wait for this, man. I cannot <laughs> wait. By the way, we are 13 likes away. Oh, so if you haven't goodness. clicked that thumbs up icon, you are depriving your fellow Commanders fans of slapping Smitty. This is ridiculous. So please, if you haven't already, click that thumbs up icon and get it. us to 150 likes. Let me throw a shot clock on here. All right, we're going to get a shot clock going here. Give me two minutes here. All right. Give me two minutes. We have two minutes to get 10 more likes, can we get there? No matter what, we have one slap. No matter what, we have one because of Mike sending in that 20. And, and if you send in a 20 yourself, that's another one to the tally. But we got two minutes here. The clock is ticking. We're nine likes away. This is getting ridiculous. This is, but I can feel the tension in the room right now. Pause. <laughs> Come on now. We got, we got Will Diggs saying, let Mike Tyson do the slap. You want me to die? <laughs> that, 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 that's like a death wish. I, I, don't, I don't know if Mike, if Mike Tyson's even available. I, I don't think he is. He'll be in Dallas uh, in the next couple months. He's going to fight Jake Paul at Jerry World. Wait, but, is he uh, training here? I don't know if he's training here. I doubt it. But I know the fight is here. We should go to that. We, I, it, take it. I've looked. It is an it, arm and a leg to get in that No building. way. Really? 350 to get in that building. <laughs> <all right. laughs> 350 to watch hey, two amateurs fight? I, I guess so. Yeah, I guess you're you kidding call, me. Call Mike Tyson an amateur at this point, but yeah. Wait, wait, but like he he's not like professional boxer anymore. No, right? he's not in you know, he's not in year year round professional. Yeah, boxer, he's not like in so, a league. Yeah, so I guess you could yeah, he's technically He's technically, technically an amateur. An amateur. That, that's so funny to and, have that distinction. And it's Jake Paul, right? Not yep, Logan. Yep, Jake Paul. So Jake is an amateur too, right? Cuz he just does the, like these individual fights. He's not like a part of a league or anything. Yeah, I don't think Jake's a part of a league. Logan's not a part. Of, Logan's definitely not a part. Guys, of a league, but... we have 30 seconds left and we still need six more likes. I don't think Commander's Report fans can do it. I, I don't think... I, I've got the tortilla right here. I don't think the HTTPs can get it done. 
If you're just joining us, we need five more likes to slap producer Smitty in the face with a tortilla right I'll here. I'll even give you guys a couple seconds. You know, the YouTube delay. Get, you know, we got to shoot no, up in we space got and throw it Ten seconds. Down. Somebody click that thumbs up icon. Four, four likes away. Oh, we're close. We're one like away. One like away. I Somebody click soon. it right now. I spoke too soon. All right, so we're going to give it a couple seconds. Give it a couple seconds. No, somebody took away their life. Oh, are you serious? All right, I'll tell you what. If we can get to 150 by the time I get done with my first slap here, then we'll get it. Let's go! We just got there! You got to be kidding. Yes! <laughs> yes! Get up here, Smitty! Oh, my goodness. Let's go! Get up here! Send it full screen. Send it, send it full screen so everybody can see it. Everybody can see it. Come on. And by the way, shout out to my girlfriend, Cassie. She's in the chat right now. She got me these tortillas. And they're like, they're like whole grain or something, but they, they, they stay together. They do, they do not break. So that you really feel it. All right, get up here, Smitty. Let's go. Two slaps. Every $20 super chat that comes in, we're slapping him again. And by the way, he's not short. I'm really not. This looks awful. <laughs> I, I'm six five and a half, so I'm, I'm five eleven. He look he looks like a kid. I look like a child. All right, glasses off. I, I don't want to break the glasses. Don't want to break the prescriptions. All right, you ready? Yep. Turn your face the other way. No, other way. There, yep. Ready? Three, two, one. Brace yourself. Oh! <laughs> Whoa! Oh my God! Wake up and smell roses. You feel feel alive? Yeah. Ready for another one? Yeah, here we go. All right. Woo. Here we go. Three, two, one. Oh, that one hurt. <laughs> oh, that one got me in the ear. Oh, wow. Uh, oh, my God. Uh, this side of my face is like I, I, sl I slapped him as hard as I freaking could, oh folks. Oh, my God. Here we go, baby. Let's go. All right. If somebody sends in another 20, we'll do it again. We'll throw one more shot clock on there, but that's it. But that's it. All right. Put up another two minutes. And that felt good, man. That felt good. There's a, there's so, there's something about just having a license to just slap the crap out of somebody as hard as you can with something that's like not like your hand. You know. Yeah. I don't know what it is. Some, like, something that's not going to leave a mark. Yeah, like, we'll something that's, like, mark. not going to, like, completely, like, ruin somebody, like, give someone CTE. Yeah, You yeah, know, yeah, like, yeah. something that's just, like, just, I don't know, man. Like, you just channel your anger out of anything that's going on in your life and just be like, hmm. I don't know, man. It, there's just something satisfying It's, it's, it's about like getting it. just whacked with a pillow. Like, really, like... And if you're in a real pillow fight and you actually wind that thing up and whack somebody in the head, it hurts. It hurts. Yeah. <laughs> All right, man. We got a minute twenty left. If somebody wants us, oh, we're oh, almost okay. there. Okay. Okay. We're almost there. All right. All right. Mike put in ten. He resets the shot clock. All right. He resets the shot clock. If somebody else sends in a ten, we will do another slap. Shout out to Mike. So Mike is going halfway here. <laughs> Says, get that man a drink. All right, Smitty, Patron Zone time. Patron Zone. We're getting busy. There we Got go, Mike. Go. There we go, Mike. Gotta love it. If somebody else can put in a $10 super chat, it'll be another shot for Smitty. Like He's the biggest shot I've ever seen <laughs> in my life. This is a mad, like, this is a heavy shot. Jesus. You're not supposed to fill that one up all the way. I guess not, but hey. Butterbean. You're, get, you're, get, you're getting a twofer. All here, right. you're, you're on the commander's report. <laughs> Salud. Uh, Will Dig says $50 super chat buys a belt to the bare ass. That is ridiculous. <laughs> Luckily, nobody in this, in this office wears a belt to work. Oh, man, I usually wear a belt, but today I'm not. I actually do usually wear a belt sometimes, too. But, but I don't think we can show Smitty's bare ass live no, on YouTube. That, I, think, I think we'd probably get demonetized. Demonetization would be probably pretty easy. Emotion. So right now, you haven't, you haven't shot, start the shot clock, Smitty. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah wow. I, I gave you guys extra time. Yes, he ridiculous. did. He gave you guys extra time. Just a $10 super chat means another shot for Smitty, and we slap him. 
All right, so who's going to send in that other tent? Who's it going to be? Come on, baby. You got two minutes. King Hypno says he's a Cowboys fan. Hit him with a Cowboys steak. No, no. I am a Seattle Seahawks fan, my friend. Yes. Don't get it twisted. Our other producers here, Coop and Tex, they are Cowboys fans, and we yeah. love slapping them too. Oh, yeah. Uh, but Smitty, big time Seahawks fan, likes to talk a lot of shit. I and know, it, and it's a, and it's his first Commanders Report live show. I enjoyed it. I I, I love the show. Um, lo love the love the interaction. You guys also gave some really great questions as well in the mailbag. So you, I I can tell you're invested and in, want you know the most up to date Commanders news and rumors. Uh, on yeah, YouTube, this, this so. is a good squad here that that yeah. shows up every Thursday, man. I so like this crew. hopefully, hopefully you'll uh, we'll see more of Smitty on the Commanders Report here in the weeks to come. Likewise. What now? Speaking of my my Seahawks, I guess you know we've, we've been talking Commanders for. Almost an hour and a half now. What do you? Just quick thoughts on my on my uh, Seahawks with a minute left on the shot clock. I like some of the things that they did. Yeah. I like Mike McDonald. Mm -hmm. I, I know he, I know he's a great defensive mind. <sighs> They're not going to win the division. It's like the big thing is: is Geno going to be? Like the same guy going from that Shane Waldron offense, which was really QB friendly. It fit him like a glove, his mm -hmm. play style. Yep. Now he's going to a system where he's going to be responsible for a lot of different stuff yeah. with Ryan Grubb. And also the question is, does this Ryan Grubb system fit well in the NFL? And like, is he going to adjust some of that to the, to the pro game? Because I would designate it as like a really good college offense. Uh -huh. But it's a college offense. Yeah. So like, is he going to like transition some of this stuff? to uh, the NFL? Is he going to keep the same stuff? And then if he keeps it as the same stuff, is Geno going to be able to run that system? Yeah. So there's some questions to be answered there. And the offensive line, holy crap, man. You guys need to... You guys need to get like a guard in round one. Definitely the guard. Uh, the tackles are solid. Cross and Lucas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, the tackles are fine, but like... Who do you have at center? Fortner? Uh, it's, it, no, right now, we, 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 let go, we let go of Evan Brown and brought and we're moving up in the depth chart. Olu, uh, Olu Watimi from Michigan. Like. Yeah, that's not, that's not going to cut it. That's yeah. not, you're going to have to get – you might have to get replacements for all three interior offensive linemen position. Yeah. That's going to be rough, man. And Gino is somebody that doesn't move. So if he's getting interior pressure – Watch out! I, I I'm I'm not very uh, excited about the. Uh, what do you th What do you think of Jackson Powers Johnson at 16? Would you go him that? Would you take him that high? I would like to be able to trade down maybe into the 20s and still be able to get him. Yeah, yeah. In my in my latest mock draft, I have them trading down. Okay, so do you have get them, more picks? Okay, and, and taking a guy like Powers Johnson. I have them taking Chop Robinson. Oh boy! Oh and boy. then I have them addressing interior offensive line later. Okay. I, I'm, I'm, I'm honestly looking at a guy like Graham Barton as well. I think Graham Barton would be a good fit because be you can play fit. guard or center. Yeah. But yeah. so can Jackson Powers Johnson. Yeah. So I, I think those two guys are definitely at the top of my list as far as I, IOLs for Seattle. Gotcha. All right. So we didn't get another super chat, unfortunately. So we can't slap Smitty again. Ah, uh, sucks. It yeah. sucks. It sucks. <laughs> All right. But that's going to be at the end of today's show. Big shout out to Smitty today for uh, coming in here Thank you guys. and being the producer. He was great. Uh, smooth show today. So good job there, Mr. Smith. Uh, but we'll see you guys later. We appreciate all the support. And until next time, hail to the. Oh! We were literally about to At end the, the stream! Buzzer! At the buzzer! IQ Barbecue with a $10 super Are chat. Are you kidding me? Everybody spam barbecue in the chat. Everybody spam barbecue in the chat. And he's a first time super chatter. First time super chatter. IQ barbecue coming in at the last second. Drink up, Smitty, because oh. you're getting slapped again. Yeah, I'm going to need it. Let's go. Right. Let's go. Making my week, IQ barbecue. All right. Making my week. Week going to the Patron Zone for IQ Barbecue. By Thumbs the up. by the way, every slap that we're doing on Smitty today, I'm going harder on each one. Oh dear God! All right, so if Smitty thought the last one hurt, buckle up, <laughs> buckle oh, up. Right. Time in the Buckeye is in here. Mike has bad knees. Is here. Uptown Dre, Cassie is here. Hurley is here. Let's go. Let's go. I'm telling you, man, I've slapped Smitty as hard as I could possibly slap him with one tortilla. Still, 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 
Has, has, has still not broken. All right, you ready? Should we switch up the cheek? Should we, should we switch it up? Yeah, or do you just want, you know, just one side? Hey, you know what? Switch it up. All right, we'll switch it up. All right. Are you guys ready? No, 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 no. Right there's good. Right there's perfect. All right. Here we go, commies. Here we go. <laughs> Are you good? Yeah. <laughs> you feel? Oh All right. No. Look at this now. Now it's starting to break after three slaps. That was getting crazy. All right. All right. Let's let. <laughs> All right. Let's let's sign off here, Smitty. Oh man. IQ Barbecue, thank you for making my week with sending in that $10 super chat. That was absolutely awesome. That's going to be it for me and Smith today. Thank you guys so much for all of your support. And until next time, hail to the command.